I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video, just like last month, this one will be a why you should read video again. And this time it is for War for the Rose Throne series by Peter McLean. It is one of my favorite series. It has always been one of my favorite ongoing series and now that it's finished and now that I have read the final book of the series, I can safely say that this has become one of my favorite series of all time and now this is why you should read War for the Rose Throne series by Peter McLean. Just like my video for why you should read the Dandelion Dynasty, I'm going to mix uh, why you should read this series with some of my thoughts on Priest of Crowns, the final book in the series and whether it has actually delivered a satisfying conclusion to the series or not. And in my opinion, Priest of Crowns is a heartbreaking, ferociously blood-soaked and unforgettable ending to the War for the Rose Throne. After four years, Priest of Bones was published in the year 2018. War for the Rose Throne is finally finished and Peter McLean has shown that he is the right man for the right task of delivering the final pages of Thomas Piety's memoir. I am not exaggerating when I continuously state that War for the Rose Throne is one of the most engaging, underrated, and also page-turning series that I've read. I first opened the first pages of Thomas Piety's memoir in the year 2019, and I already considered myself a late comer to the series. It is an injustice and also a shame how underrated and also underhyped this series is. It deserves more readership. I think the criminally underhyped status of War for the Rose Throne just proved how punishing and how unfair the publishing industry is. Think about it, for those of you who don't know, War for the Rose Throne was so close to being discontinued. And for those who ask me, this is why it is impossible right now to find a physical copy of the US edition for Priest of Gallows and also Priest of Crowns. Because the US publisher has decided to drop the series after the second book, Priest of Lies. And I think it is the publisher's loss to discontinue such a great series. Yes, yes, money matters most, blah blah blah, but I am unfortunately a selfish reader who prioritized reading a terrific series to its completion. Thankfully, Joe Fletcher, the UK publisher behind War for the Rose Throne, is willing to push forward with publishing the rest of the series to the end. And so here we are at the end of the bloody road of the series. Seeing that this is the final book of the series and this is a spoiler free review, I will refrain from talking about the details of the plot in Priest of Crowns and the entire series. I will assume that if you have read the series up to this final installment or if you have not started the series at all, you will want to read everything inside this book or series as blindly as possible. And I can allow that. Allow me to, however, mention some elements that were done so brilliantly in this book and throughout the series. I may sound a bit repetitive in my review, but allow me your forgiveness. Honestly speaking, there is close to zero praises about Priest of Crowns that I haven't shouted about in my past three reviews for Priest of Bones, Priest of Lies, and Priest of Gallows. If you love the previous three books, you are guaranteed to love Priest of Crowns as well. Every strand of the narratives in the past three books is back one last time. McLean is exceptionally consistent with his storytelling quality. A deadly deceit blades unseated, merciless torment, inevitable betrayal, harsh truth, and gory explosions were evident in the text of Priest of Crowns. This magnificent novel provided a dark and very fitting finishing touch to Thomas Piety's memoir with a lot of food for thought. To my mind, the last page of this novel will direct readers to retrace Thomas Piety's journey in Ellisburg and Dansburg from the beginning of Priest of Bones. You will see everything in a new light, and I think you will love it. No one cared what the common folk said, no one ever does, until they finally rise in fire and violence. If you have heard praises about War for the Rose Throne, I am pretty damn sure you will have heard reviewers, myself included, talking about the insanely distinct narration of the main character. And this is true from the first page of Priest of Bones to the last page of Priest of Crowns. Maybe even more so in the entirety of Priest of Crowns. So far, I have read more than 600 fantasy novels and I can say with confidence that Thomas Piety has one of the most distinct and memorable voices in the entire fantasy genre. When I praise Abercrombie's books and writing, one of the things I always appreciate from his writing is how easy it is to tell which character is speaking or which character we're reading about without names being mentioned. Abercrombie nailed down his character voices and inner thinking superbly well. And this is the level of immersion McLean 
or should I say, Thomas Piety demonstrated impeccably in his writing too. Why did I mention Thomas Piety instead of Peter McLean? Well, throughout my time reading this series, there were many moments when I was so fully immersed that I forgot that this is a series of grimdark fantasy books written by a real-life fantasy author. Thomas Piety sounded like a real person, and I mean that in every sense of the word. Peter McLean has become practically a messenger to tell his story. This Peaky Blinders inspired fantasy series infused with sword and magic never once felt like any of the characters behave out of characters. Never. If there were any, there are explanations for them eventually, subtle or not. Also, War for the Rose Throne is a grimdark fantasy series with profoundly deep character study. Thomas Piety always says, we as a person always have levers that move us. Whether they are love, money, ambition, power, respect, authority, family, or something else, no human is exempt from this. No human is exempt from their respective levers. This point revolving around motivation is constantly backed up by the narrative. And in Priest of Crowns, we get to finally see to witness the truth of what moved Thomas Piety the most. And the result may not be what you think. It's safe to say that Thomas Piety has become one of my favorite characters in fantasy, but it is also worth acknowledging that my admiration for his character doesn't mean I agree with all of his actions. No way, especially not in Priest of Crowns. I feel this is not something I have to say as I think it should be common sense already, and I am not just speaking about this book. However, some readers still think a fictional character's behavior, even when they're villains or anti-heroes, is immediately representative of the author's real views or philosophies. This is simply not true. It's not that simple. And deluding yourself into thinking it is just feels incredibly childish, self-righteous, and practically begging for so many books to be banned. How can you write villain or anti-hero POV chapters without them thinking or doing questionable actions? I can think of Thomas as one of my favorite characters while disagreeing with many of his actions. I am sure readers won't agree with many of Thomas' actions in Priest of Crowns, as it was the same for me. But it matters more to me that Thomas, or any character, feels on point and logical with their character development and personality. How he always acts like he owns any place or environment he enters for the first time, how he struggles in choosing friends or ambition, and more and the characterizations and development were undoubtedly executed so nicely in Priest of Crowns and the entire series. This notion is not exclusive to Thomas Piety, but to other supporting characters in the series, Bloody Anne, Rosie, Johan, Billy, Mina, and many more art characters I will always remember now. Lastly, before I close this review, I want to praise Peter McLean's balance and talent in handling political machinations and postponing action scenes. War for the Rose Throne is a series filled with scheming and manipulations and none of them ever felt boring. If anything, they are some of the best parts of the entire series. I know that, that Prince of Gallows, a book which, well, you can see m me being killed in that book. Prince of Gallows was a book embedded with more political intrigues than any other books in the in the series. And in a way that is clearly true, but also not entirely correct because the entire series is practically full of that. What I really love about Prince of Crowns though is the balance that Peter McLean handled. In terms of pacing and execution, it felt like a return to Prince of Lies, the second book in War for the Rose Throne, which is also one of my favorite books in the series up there with Prince of Crowns now. The set pieces are constantly moved from one place to another, and devastating and tension-packed action scenes always follow where the money goes. I have so many praises for this book and for this series. I declared so many times on my YouTube channel now that War for the Rose Throne should be titled as the Slum Killer, the Reading Slum Killer. And I feel that title is now more unmistakable in Priest of Crowns. I never felt bored reading Priest of Crowns, not even for one page. The fatal lies we tell ourselves, the explosive cunning and its repercussion, and the unstoppable descent into chaos were all remarkably put on the pages. And everything eventually leads towards the jaw-dropping ending that will make you rethink Thomas' actions for the entirety of the series. 
Prince of Crowns is a relentlessly grim, gripping, and emotional conclusion to the War for the Rose Throne series. With this series now completed, Peter McLean has successfully moved War for the Rose Throne from one of my favorite ongoing series into becoming one of my favorite completed series of all time. I will certainly miss Thomas Piety and his narration. So few fantasy series, so few fantasy books in the market now reach this level of outstanding narrative distinction. This absolutely suspenseful series that started clearly in inspired by Peaky Blinders, has transformed into its own thing since Priest of Lies. And now I am so grateful to have read the series to its completion. Among other things, the words inside the great book and series are the levers that moved me. And for the rightly suitable grim dark fantasy reader, or dark fantasy, whatever you want to call it, War for the Rose Throne contain all the right words, phrasing, and story guaranteed to satisfy our endless thirst for great grimdark fantasy books. So bravo to Peter McLean and Thomas Piety for delivering this amazing grimdark fantasy series. If you haven't started War for the Rose Throne yet, you are missing out. Please give this series a try, especially if you are a reader who love morally gray main characters, peaky blinders or gangster stories, soft magic system and addicting narration. You can't go wrong with giving War for the Rose Throne a read. I love this series very much and for those of you who ask when I will do another list for my favorite completed series of all time, well, I will make an updated list at the end of the year and trust me that War for the Rose Throne will be included on that list. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's my series review or why you should read War for the Rose Throne series by Peter McLean. And also, this is kind of like a mix with my thoughts on Priest of Crowns. So yeah, do let me know whether you love gangster stories in fantasy, uh, whether you love Peaky Blinders or not, and whether you have started reading uh, War for the Rose Throne or not. Once again, if you haven't started reading this series yet, I highly recommend it. So yeah, that's it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.